I'm Caroline Corsi. I'm farm manager and grasslands and agriculture officer for uh, Worcestershire Wildlife Trust. Our purpose is to protect and enhance Worcestershire's Wildlife Trust. The trust itself owns about 900 hectares uh, within Worcestershire. Uh, we have about 12,000 members. We're standing on their farm, which is a 65 hectare mixed arable livestock farm. The trust took me on to manage this farm with the specific remit that we were to um, do whatever it took to help halt the decline in farm and wildlife and in so doing um, be able to demonstrate to other land managers in Worcestershire what they could do to help halt the decline. Um, and to put that in context, uh, the recent State of Nature report shows we've lost 60% of our wildlife in the last 50 years. Um, and things like honeybees uh, in places are going down a third year in, year out. The first thing I did was draw up a plan uh, of soil restoration. Uh, on average, the soil organic matters uh, were about 2.5%. But through doing strategic soil sampling around the rest of the farm, the soil is capable of of comfortably sitting at 8-9% and in a situation where it's never disturbed of perhaps getting to 17-18% and that's what it would have been 1947 in the war years. We're entering the fifth year now of this soil restoration project and the heart of it has been uh, green manuring and the seeds that we buy from Coswell Seeds. Every seed has to have a multi-function and by that I mean that it has to benefit the soil. We've got a range of plants ranging from mustard, charlock, uh, phacelia, lucerne down below, crimson clover. There are four or six meter wide strips of different mixes planting down here. Some of them don't look that exciting, but the key thing that this is doing is it's capturing the sun's energy and putting it back down. I don't know if we can pull some roots out. There we go. And putting it down into these lovely tap roots that are going deep down to the soil. And look at that, I mean, you've got a bone dry soil, but these roots are still working. We want to keep this mix ticking along, cut, regrow a bit, cut, regrow a bit again, so that we can optimize the root growth that's going underneath. Not cut, then cultivate and leave it bare for a crop that's not going in for another eight weeks. Then we'd lose our benefit. If you have a look in here, what we've got is mustard, but it's undersown with Persian clover and buckwheat. Persian clover. It's just heaven. You just walk through this and you come out later in the day and what you find is lots of moths and butterflies coming to take nectar from this. Buckwheat is fantastic at um, holding onto phosphate in the ground in low phosphate situations. So one of the things we can say to farmers here is we're not out to apply phosphate, we're not going to buy any. Um, if you have a soil that has good um, mycorrhiza, within it and a good functioning soil biology then and your phosphate index is around one and three quarter to two um, and by using plants like buckwheat you can have the soil biology make the soil behave as if it had an index of four and this is without having to go and destroy a, non a non-renewable resource. Within 10 meters what we're saying to people is plants do their best when they're as part of a community and that's how we're trying to get the best out of the, the green manures and the seeds that we're buying in here. And that, we believe, means that what's happening underground is things that we need an electron microscope to see. But these plants each support each other. So what we noticed during the drought was that the buckwheat was growing away, and then it stopped. When the lucerne started growing, the buckwheat started growing again. Now, it's probably because the soil temperature warmed up. But what is happening in here is that there's a motorway of connections between all of these plants and they're sharing water, they're sharing resources, they're sharing their ability to um, repel predators. And it's like genetic modification in the natural manner because you're getting the soil working for you. Now, on the farm scale, you would probably not be wanting to see these things flowering if they were being used as a green manure because you wouldn't necessarily be wanting the seed return with them. Um, but this particular area I was standing in, we've deliberately left it uncut uh, because we want the invertebrate benefit out here. And that's one of the things as you come out to visit these strips at different times of day, you see lots of different invertebrates starting to come. We've all heard about the bees declining um, and we've got about six beehives here and uh, 
on a plot like this two years ago, 30 metres by 30 metres wide, we figured we had 15,000 bumblebees. So we're becoming a bit of an asylum, uh, I think, for honeybees and bumblebees. We've had swarms all over the place of honeybees. But not only that, we've had bonuses come, which is I hadn't costed in the value of the forage coming off these. We're working with neighbours now to bring in traditional rare breed Hereford. Uh, those animals are coming in and grazing off a variety of these green manures that we have in the field. But also, in some places, we're taking up to three forage cups. With all of these mixes, as a, as a basic rule of thumb, we would always leave about 10% uncut so that we can get this kind of um, activity with invertebrates. But then the next stage is that these uncut areas then go on to providing, uh, well, bird seed of a different kind to the prescriptive mixes that we have to plant for our higher level stewardship and uh, entry level stewardship. What's really exciting now is that there are very hard-nosed commercial farmers saying they cannot any longer, because of climate change, have the ease of planting, growing and harvesting crops to a blueprint that they've had for the last 30 years. And I totally understand this because I was an agronomist, I left it because I was fed up with the blueprint because the blueprint is just throw lots of chemicals at it, but it was making money. Now the prices aren't so good out there and farmers need to be looking much more at field by field and within there, guess what, the soil structure within each field. If the soil is getting more organic matter and if we're managing the soil properly, not by going and ripping the guts out of it by cultivations, uh, whenever we get the opportunity, then if we look after our earthworm populations and the roots that these green manures leave behind and the cuttings, then we are getting an active soil biology. And we know this is starting to happen because we've also sent uh, samples off to have things like bacteria, mycorrhiza, uh, protozoa, nematodes, that sort of thing uh, assessed at um, Lavastoke Park.